Well, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Noam and I'm on the board of the San Francisco Dharma Collective and I'm, I'm always happy to see new faces and uh, always happy to see old faces as well. Um, and one of the people we've been very fortunate to have teach with us a number of times over the last couple of years is Tig. So we were really happy when Tig was able to jump in and teach today after a last minute cancellation. And uh, our the other thing I'm so happy about is that uh, when we decided to, I, I think many of us in the Dharma Collective think a lot about taking our practice off the mat and what that means and how to do it. And uh, some of our classes are sort of more up here, but many, most of our teachers also talk about practicalities and with everything um, that's going on in the world now, we thought this would be a good time to make a, to put together a class that was explicit about what is going on now. And then many of our regular teachers were weaving that into their regular classes, but we thought let's bring them in and just put them on the spot. Tig, <laughs> what is wise action? Mm -hmm. So we're thrilled to have Tig here. Uh, this is our fourth, I think, wise action class. Am I right? Or is it third? Third, thanks Alejandro, I'm keeping track. Alejandro will be teaching this class down the road and uh, Nils who's here also today is gonna be teaching next week. So it's wonderful to have this community. And, and so what I was starting to say is that this is speaking to people who, I see someone here who hasn't even been to the center since um, Against the Stream closed. So welcome back. And it's just great to have everyone here and we look forward to, to the session tonight. Thanks Tig. Thank you, Noam. Uh, if you're just joining, there's an invitation here to just add into the chat uh, where you're dialing in from today, tonight, and uh, your intention for joining this session. Already some really powerful words coming through here. Uh, I can feel, I can feel what's being shared here. So thank you. Uh, as Noam mentioned, my name is Tig. For those of you that I have not met yet, um, I like as I'm referred to as a sometimes teacher at the Dharma Collective. Um, I am a meditation teacher, so I'm trained in secular evidence-based programs that are grounded in Dharma, but um, allow me the ability to teach in public institutions. Uh, so I primarily work with um, parents and healthcare providers in the neonative intensive care unit, um, as well as emergency room doctors and nurses in New York City hospitals um, and community centers like this. I'm currently in uh, New York. I'm just north of the city in what is occupied Sint Sink land. Um, I think it's important to acknowledge, uh, well, this will be a theme tonight of just acknowledging um, where we are, you know, that we're on occupied territory. And this is the beginning of a path forward towards wise action is starting where we are and acknowledging what has come before us and the suffering of those um, that came before that have allowed us to be here now. So just taking a moment to reflect on where you are and those that came before you. And my intention tonight is to um, be with community, first and foremost, uh, and to share tools and practices that have helped me uh, with wise action, as, and as we'll talk about wise anger, um, and to practice alongside each of you. Uh, so I'm not here talking at you, I'm actually here in the practice with you. Um, so as Noam mentioned that this is, uh, this class tonight is part of a wise action series. Um, for those of you who are Dharma practitioners, you are familiar with the Eightfold Path and how action is one very important step, um, aspect of the Eightfold Path, not step because it's not linear. Uh, and for those of you that are newer to Dharma teachings and practice, uh, welcome. Uh, the Eightfold Path is one of the primary teachings that the Buddha left us with 
um, on the aspects that lead to liberation, the enlightened mind, uh, wise action being a key one. It's very interesting that uh, we had a little bit of, in the planning of the, tonight, we had a little back and forth on the word. Uh, and, you know, the most accurate transla translation uh, is right. So right mindfulness, right effort, right concentration, right action. Um, I prefer skillful because there's a, a layer or an element of judgment to like right and wrong. And you're going to hear me say this a lot tonight. There. Of course, ultimately there is right action. Uh, however, this is very personal. So what, what, what that means, wise action for one of us uh, may mean maybe different than the next person. So this is not a prescribed formula. And the invitation tonight is to investigate what this means for you. Um, so I like that the Dharma Collective is using wise. Um, I think that's a very skillful word. Uh, and uh, the other thing that I, I've been noticing, as with all of um, these examples of racial inequality and social injustice, is that we see this pattern of something happening, uh, a big, we take a big step forward in the movement, protests happen, maybe we have a little bit of progress in the um, influencing laws and, and changing mindsets, but then things start kind of dropping out of our field awareness um, and so what i love the intention behind the series is to really keep the momentum of this movement going and what's been stirred up uh, in this country and around the world and not just let it slip back until the next time and how do we really keep this momentum going you see my eyes moving around i really in in the absence of our physical connection I really like to look at each of you on the screen. So if you see my eyes wandering, I'm just gazing at each of you. So tonight, uh, for my contribution to this Wise Action Series, I'd like to bring the element of anger in and how this emotion that can be extraordinarily destructive and overtake us can actually be transformed and how we can work with it, not push it away, uh, we'll talk a little bit about sp not spiritually bypassing, but to actually use the anger, use that polarity that arises in us when we see or when we witness or experience ourselves any kind of injustice, and how do we take that into action. One of the programs that I um, am certified to teach is called Cultivating Emotional Balance, and that is a mix of... Um, these teachings of the Dharma mixed with kind of modern science research around emotions. So kind of pulling out some of the teachings from the CEB program on anger and using it uh, as an element for the wise action uh, series. So tonight, just to frame our session, we're gonna um, have a practice um, that just to arrive and help soften the mind to allow um, some difficult emotions to be here. And then we'll move into uh, a short talk on anger and introduce some tools to work with it. Um, and then we'll move from there into a contemplative reflection on anger uh, and using a specific experience in our life to kind of work with and explore, investigate, how we can then set an intention on taking action on that anger uh, in a constructive way. So this is really all about transforming this uh, destructive emotion into constructive action. Um, and then we'll end with some time for sharing our experiences. I, I really, in a lot of uh, my offerings, I like this to be more about your experience rather than, uh, you know, I'll have a little bit to say and share, um, but for you to really have the time to practice and work with um, and then share your experiences. Uh, so I'd like to take a moment to just acknowledge um, my point of view here and, um, and the color of my skin. Uh, so I have uh, a mixed race background ethnically, but I have white skin. And so um, while I don't know what it's like for a person of color 
to suffer, I know what it's like to suffer. And in the teachings, um, compassion is not necessarily empathetically feeling someone else's suffering. It's impossible to feel someone else's suffering, but knowing how it is for us to suffer and that we wish to be free from that and knowing that other beings are suffering maybe in different ways, but that we can still share that altruistic desire or aspiration to be free from that suffering. Um, and so I think it is important to acknowledge my point of view here um, and uh, my privilege. I'm not an expert on social justice or racial equality. Uh, I do have quite that in-depth experience with anger. Uh, but here we're really exploring the emotion and I said the tools and setting these intentions for actions, not really for me to be here to preach to you. Uh, or to talk about my point of view here. Um, just really to share that that point of view in holding this container for us all does come from privilege. Um, I also think it's very important to acknowledge that my training to be able to hold a container like this and to explore the Dharma and attend classes and teacher trainings and think is a result of my privilege. Uh, and so using that to help us um, make progress and be in service to those that do not have that same privilege. Uh, a couple of quick guidelines before we jump into our first practice. Um, so an invitation here to be present. Uh, you know, uh, we're on technology. There's a lot of distractions around us. There may be texts and emails coming in. If we were in the, in a physical space right now, we would be turning the phones off. Uh, so just really setting an intention to be here as much as possible. Let the, um, you know, the text as they pop up on the screen and things like that, just let them be there and, uh, and be here with us. Um, being open, um, what arises, whatever arises, just being open to it. It may be uncomfortable. Hopefully it's a little uncomfortable, as I said, and I'm going to keep saying this is not about bypassing. I'm not using the Dharma here to try and make us feel better about being angry. Um, it's actually the opposite. It's actually how do we use it, use that anger and that discomfort to uh, make change. So being open to that and not pushing away uh, anything that's feeling uncomfortable, but rather to just open and soften to that. And then to be respectful so that we are all here to experience, to learn, to listen, and to share, um, not to fix anyone, uh, ourselves or anyone else, not to give advice. We are gonna have a pretty significant time during the end to share. And so I'll, I'll give a reminder on this when we get there, but um, just that we're sharing from our own experience and, um, if there is something that we'd like to respond to, whether it's in a smaller group or the larger group center, that it comes from the I perspective rather than the you perspective, not commenting on what someone shared. And really that's to help create a really safe space. So if, if we're feeling like when we share, someone's gonna try and give us advice or fix what we said, um, we might not be as likely or inclined to share. So. Um, just really inviting you to bring this level of respect for both uh, other people and yourself. Along with that, if the, the respect for self, taking care of yourself, if something's feeling overwhelming, really strong emotions come in and you'd like to take a break, just rest with the breath, get a glass of water, um, please listen to what you need and, and not overextend yourself. Um, okay, so going to move into our first practice. Um, so just to frame out this, um, this part of our session tonight, we're going to be using some mindfulness of breath and body just to help anchor ourselves, arrive, um, be here. And then we'll move into um, some working with emotions. And really what we're going to be exploring here is how do we hold dichotomies? How do we soften at the same time that we might be holding anger. Uh, and it's a bit of a mind training exercise. So 
uh, this is a practice, it, it may be difficult, things may come up. And remember that this is not about trying to feel better or feel good, it's just about being with what is and practicing. Uh, we'll, we'll practice for about 20 minutes. Uh, if you'd like to turn your video off or when I'm uh, participating online, I like to just turn my uh, computer off to the side so it's not facing me while I'm practicing. So feel free to set yourself up however is comfortable. Um, finding whatever posture is comfortable for you, whether that's seated, you can lay down, uh, you can um, stand up, you can change posture. Uh, so really taking care of yourself. Uh, as I always say, this is not meditation boot camp. So just being comfortable. Uh, and you can keep your eyes open or closed. I'll be moving back and forth between both. Uh, so whatever, whatever feels right and safe for you, please do. So as we begin to transition into a practice, just taking a moment here to notice what's alive in your experience as you begin to settle in the mind, the body. Maybe noticing how the mind may be moving, thoughts, memories from the day. Maybe something that I said is already triggering some thought forms, just noticing how the mind is right now. And what's it like in the body? Is there tightness? Are you tired? Are you feeling energized? There's no right or wrong, just bringing the mind into the felt experience of this moment. And to help us just fully arrive and be here, let's take three breaths together, breathing in deeply, allowing the belly to soften and expand as the air enters into the body. And then on the exhale, whenever you're ready, just releasing, relaxing. Taking another breath like that in through the nostrils, extending the abdomen outwards as you breathe in. And then a slow exhale also through the nose that feels comfortable, relaxing, releasing. And then one more just like that in your own time. And then releasing any manipulation of the breath, just returning back to a natural breathing rhythm. And now bringing the attention further into the body and feeling the contact the body's making with the support beneath it. becoming aware of the ground that the body is resting on and feeling the firmness, the support. Maybe focusing in even closer on those points of contact that the body's making. Maybe there's a sense of hardness, firmness, stability. And then let's carry that exploration further into the body. And where do we find that earth element, that hardness in the body? Perhaps it's the bones, the skeletal system of the body that's holding us upright. And while we're here, bringing the awareness to the spinal column, making sure that whatever posture you're in, there's a straight, aligned back with the neck and the head.
And now transitioning to where we're feeling softness in the body. Maybe that's relaxing the muscles around the eyes. Letting the jaw, the jaw be soft. Allowing the shoulders to drop. Let's bring the attention now all the way to the palms of the hands and see if it's possible here to cultivate a sense of softness. So maybe without even moving the hands, a sense of opening, relaxing, releasing here in the palms of the hands. And let's bring the attention down to the soles of the feet and do the same. So if there's a possibility of finding softness here, relaxing the soles of the feet, maybe it's been a long day walking, standing, just releasing any of that tension, finding a sense of softness. If you notice the mind wandering, that's not a problem. It's actually an opportunity to practice, to strengthen the ability to bring the awareness back to the present moment. So when you notice that the mind has slipped away, maybe cultivating that same sense of softness, when you meet that moment, that awareness that the mind is no longer with the body. And just gently returning back to this experience whenever you're ready. And let's come back up and explore the softening in the abdomen. Noticing if there's any bracing or tightness here. Perhaps using the breath to help bring a sense of softness here. And while we're here in this part of the body, let's so see if it's possible to release, relax, soften the pelvic floor. And no worries if you're not experiencing that softening or release, just using whatever is arising in your experience as the anchor to the moment that we're in now. So the invitation here from this place of softening in the body is see if we can zoom out and hold that sense of softness, but also return to that earth element and investigating if it's possible to hold these experiences of softening alongside the awareness of where things are hard or firm. And seeing if it's possible to hold both of these experiences at the same time you might find it supportive to toggle back and forth from a sensation of softness to a sensation of hardness and then back again. Perhaps noticing a sense of neutralizing or these sensations canceling each other out. Just bringing a sense of curiosity. There's no success or failure here. It's just noticing what's it, what it's like to have these dichotomies of experience in the body. How the mind may be relating to these simultaneous experiences. And some of us may find this invitation a bit challenging and remembering that this is a practice. This is a training of the mind. 
There's no expectation that you can do something. Just rather feel. We'll make a transition in a moment now from the felt experience of the body back into cognitive awareness as we maintain our practice, stay in the meditation. And calling to mind an aspect of life that you're grateful for. Something that feels good for you in this moment. Maybe it was something that happened earlier in the day, but just a feeling of gratitude that's accessible for you in this moment. And as we use the thinking mind to cultivate this sense of gratitude, how does it show up in the body? Is there a felt experience of gratitude in the somatic field? And if not, that's fine. You can stay with the thoughts as they arise. And if you are feeling a sensation in the body, just resting with it, feeling that perhaps softening and opening and relaxing. And staying in this experience of gratitude and widening the awareness to now include an aspect that cultivates anger. Maybe it's watching the news, hearing a, a certain person speak. Maybe it's witnessing injustice or inequality. Just calling to mind a, an experience or an example that arouses a sense of anger in your experience. And just looking at it, so we're staying in this place of softening, feeling the flow of the gratitude, but then just casting an eye over to this memory or experience of anger. Just staying with the headline and not getting lost in the story of what's making you angry. And just as we were practicing holding where it's soft in the body and where it may be hard, let's apply that here. How is it for you to hold this experience of thankfulness or gratitude alongside and looking at this experience of anger? Again, you may find it supportive to toggle back and forth between the gratitude and this headline of anger. Perhaps you're able to hold both simultaneously. Perhaps this is frustrating or confusing and just welcoming that. This is part of the training. Developing the ability to hold this difficult emotion of anger from a place of softness. And let's just rest here for a few moments and let this experience unfold in silence. Resting with the soft gratitude and the hard anger.
Again, if you're noticing a very active mind or difficulty holding both of these dichotomies, seeing if you can bring that sense of softening to that. Really seeing whatever it is that may be distracting you, returning back to the felt experience of this dichotomy. And now releasing any thought forms or concentration on a specific aspect of the experience and just resting for a final moment in an open awareness. What's alive now? What are you noticing? And as we come to an end of this part of the practice, taking a moment to take one more deep breath in and on the out breath, releasing the practice, taking your time to return back to open eyes as you're ready, allowing an awareness to return to the light and to each other here in this container. So before we move into uh, the short talk, I just want to uh, open it up if there's any questions on that practice or if anyone had uh, an experience that they'd like to share, we can take a few minutes here. Uh, and if you are interested in sharing, um, can raise your hand and um, you'll be unmuted. So just anything that you notice, what that experience was like, any questions on the practice? I could share some things. Um, one thing I found really interesting, I've never tried to do that before, kind of hold that great gratefulness, gratitude, and anger at the same time. And something really interesting happened when we were doing, thinking about gratitude, like I just felt like my heart turned into like an egg yolk, just got like super soft. And, and then when I brought up anger, my body did this weird thing where it was like my left side was angry and my right side was in gratitude and it felt like really separate. Mm. But then sitting with it for a while, it started to kind of dissolve and mix together. That was very interesting and fun, mm. thank you. And can I ask when, when it started mixing, like what was that feeling? What was it, what were you experiencing? Well, everything felt lighter, first of all. Mm. Like the, it, it was like, kind of like the gratitude was bigger than the anger, but I had this sense of the whole thing, like my my left side had felt super solid in anger and my right side had felt similarly bounded and solid in gratitude. And then it just kind of like misted mm -hmm. together. And there was so much more space, like they, they were both still there, but there was just, there was all this breathing room kind of around mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That space, you know, opening up that space because we're about to move into talking about the difficulty, the anger, and the um, the practices to really how do we how do we open up the space around where it's so hard, where it's so difficult, where it might be so overwhelming. I know a lot of times in my own experience when I start feeling anger or start reflecting on anger, I just it's like a wave. I just it completely overtakes me. And so doing practices like this before that happens to help kind of build the muscle in the mind to be able to hold, not push away, but hold that 
Uh, and I think that example that you just shared really demonstrates that ability to not push them away, but just to be there with them. Yeah, thank you. So um, if there's any ever questions that you have as we're moving through this session, please feel free to add them into the chat and we'll keep an eye on them. Um, so if something pops into your mind later about that practice or something comes up as we keep moving, please feel free to use the chat. And as I said, we'll have plenty of time at the end also to um, ask questions and share experiences. Um, so as we were just talking about, uh, that these dichotomies, holding these dichotomies at the same time, opening up the space to work with them. It really allows us to explore the emotion, to understand how we can work with it. In this case, how we can work with the anger um, rather than just getting completely knocked over by that wave, which then gives us the chance to explore what the needs beneath the anger are. And that's really the headline here, what we're gonna be doing um, and our next practice is exploring like, what is our anger around injustice and inequality saying to us? What are our needs? What are the needs of, the, of those that are causing us to be angry? And we can't do that when we're completely consumed by it. So it really, this practice that we just did really sets the stage for, you know, using mindfulness to kind of clear, uh, clean the lens, have a clear view, um, and also open the heart to compassion, which we'll talk about in a bit. But none of this can happen when we're, when we're gripping so tightly in the throes, in the emotional uh, reaction of anger. Uh, and so we're talking a little bit about now we've opened the space. How do we work with that anger? How do we understand our anger and the needs? And just to pause for a moment and talk about the function of the emotion of anger um, at its most simple explanation. Anger is to protect our vulnerability and neutralize where we may feel threatened. And I think many of you, most of us will agree that this isn't necessarily the body, it's to our ego. So anger arises when we're trying to protect ourselves from feeling vulnerable uh, in our ego our, our um, self-cherishing mind, and how do we neutralize a perceived threat to the ego? In this case, there is a direct threat to the physicality of the human experience for people of color, those that are being discriminated against. So all of that anger is coming from this need, this desire to protect and neutralize that threat. Uh, and many times the ego does that by devaluing or undermining um, the person that is perceived to be threatening us, um, demeaning them. Uh, there's, you know, I see this all the time on social media, these idiots, they're so stupid, you know, like, where's, that's so tight, you know, like that is letting the anger just really get us. Uh, and, and we lose that openness of our mind and our heart, not to, again, not to spiritually bypass the anger and s justify the actions of those people that might be causing us to be angry, but that realizing that the anger is at its root uh, as an emotion is an attempt to push down or devalue that person. Uh, and then as Dharma practitioners, we really lose those immeasurable qualities of our heart, the compassion, the kindness, the empathy, the equanimity. And these are all the things that we need in order to meet this moment of injustice and inequality. So the minute that we start doing that to the other person, we've lost our skillful, we've, we've lost the opportunity for our skillful means to take action. Understanding what is behind our anger. Uh, in the CEB Cultivating Emotional Balance course, we do a process of mapping the emotion. And the first step on that journey is understanding what has happened in our past or in our conditioning. What is our database that is 
fueling the trigger of this anger. So per perhaps it could be times that we've been discriminated against. Perhaps it's uh, anger that's from something that has nothing to do with social justice, but it's in our database. And so when we witness and when we witness something that makes us angry, it's because the fuel from that is sitting over here in our past. Uh, and how do we skillfully work with that? How do we investigate that? And sometimes just bringing the light of awareness through mindfulness to that database can help cut the cord. As we explore understanding the needs here, what's the message behind the anger? Opening up and listening to it. What is the lesson? What is it trying to teach us? What can we learn uh, from this anger? And I think we'll all agree again, when that wave just overtakes us, there's no room to even hear these things. What's underneath that. And when we get to a place of understanding that, it better positions us to respond skillfully with a sense of empathy and compassion. And without that understanding, that sense of interbeing uh, or our common humanity here, uh, we won't be able to access the empathy and the compassion that we need to respond to it and take action. So I'm really presenting this kind of in a way, a step-by-step -step approach here of how we can train the mind before something happens that triggers us, but then also in the midst of an emotional episode, um, how can we work with it? How can we navigate through it? And then how can we respond in, with wise action and use that anger from there instead of the wave just overtaking us, using that anger to fuel the wise response. So I wanna share just a really quick personal example and then we can um, jump into uh, another practice. Um, so for me, you know, there's so many examples to pull from. Uh, I was watching, um, I was re-watching the documentary 13th. Uh, if many of you may be familiar, it's a really powerful, very anger inducing for me at least documentary on uh, the 13th amendment and um there was a scene in there that uh, a black man was being pushed i think it was in in like the 70s he was being pushed from behind and i just i mean i was crying for the majority of the documentary but that for something there was like this rage that really came to the forefront when i saw that and through using this kind of exploration, I was able to get underneath that anger um, and see where it's coming from. I, you know, the, the other thing I, I forgot to mention was that at the end of the documentary, they then show a woman at a Trump uh, rally, a black woman at a Trump rally being pushed. I can feel the emotion even just talking about it. And what came was sadness. And so when I first saw that, when I first experienced that anger, that like rage of like, how, how is this happening? And then when I saw it happening in like modern, in modern times with, you know, there was a deep sense of sadness. And I realized that underneath my anger, the need is, is the sadness that's coming to the surface. And my feelings about not not living in a safe world it's not safe for us you know um, it's not safe for people of color it's not safe um, we can we can list all the reasons why it's not safe but for me i realized i was not accepting that i may have been spiritually bypassing a bit and saying you know oh it is it is a safe world we just need to kind of like get there work towards it not accepting that it's not and I never would have gotten to that acceptance of, or realization that the world is not safe now if I didn't experience the sadness that was kind of lurking underneath the anger. And the other thing that came from this is the invitation to understand the needs from the people that are causing the anger. And this is tough, this is really tough. But I saw in that moment the conditioning of those people that were pushing them, you know, whether it was back then or now, like that it was conditioned, that, that what they learned 
and the needs under their anger was fear that they needed to feel safe just as much as the people that they were discriminating and causing harm to this delusion um, that they're under that causing harm for others will make them feel safe and i'm not sharing this to justify or excuse their actions but to understand it and that we're all just trying to find safety for ourselves in an unsafe world. And this understanding, this knowing kind of refueled my action of like, okay, so my intention coming out of this, my skillful action coming out of this is how to continue educating people to turn inwards, how to look and, and practice mindfulness so we can open up the space, um, so we can go deeper into our emotions. And um, I don't think I need to go much further into that, but like just setting that intention was what came out of that exploration for me. Um, so these practices that can help cultivate the ability to feel a deeper sense of what's arising in the body, our physiological response to our emotions, the body scan practice of you know, what we're feeling in the body, helps us cultivate this ability to come deeper into the body and listen. Um, knowing, you know, for me, when I feel anger, it's, my, it's in my biceps. And it, I know that it's a preparation to fight, even if there's no one in front of me. And my body, my body thinks that I'm being threatened when, when really it's my ego. And then pff, everything opens up for me and I can work with it. So there's some, some tools here available to us. Um, that we're going to move uh, into a practice and then we're going to open up to share. Um, so this will just be a shorter reflection. Um, we're not really involving mindfulness too much, just more as a tool. But we are going to jump into a little bit uh, what, whatever feels right for you to allow to the surface around anger. So again, reminding you of the invitation to take care of yourself. Um, and keep an open mind as we explore, okay? So again, if it feels comfortable for you to close your eyes, please do that. If you'd like to keep them open and just lower them down. And returning to that aspect of anger that we were cultivating in our opening practice, Maybe in light of this conversation, you'd like to choose a different aspect of anger, but calling to mind an example that's alive, that you can feel that's causing anger around the injustice and inequality in our world. And again, just using the thinking mind to cultivate a feeling in the body, as much as that feels safe for you to do right now. Where do you notice a physiological response in the body as you reflect on this anger? and holding whatever's arising in your experience with this openness. It's helpful to return to the breath or an area of the body that's feeling soft to help you open up space around this anger, please do so. And beginning to investigate now, what is this anger saying to you? What are the needs beneath it? Is there a message or something that's calling for attention in your database? What needs to be seen? What threat or vulnerability is this anger highlighting to you?
And perhaps if there's a better understanding of these needs beneath the anger, there's also room for some self-compassion, holding this moment softly, even though it may be hard. And if this next invitation feels comfortable for you, calling to mind the person or the people that are causing this anger to arise. And what needs to be seen here? Is there a uh, room for understanding why they may be acting or speaking the way that they are. However deluded it may be, is there a path to seeing that? And understanding does not mean excusing or justifying. And if it's available to you, perhaps extending a moment of compassion, may they be free of the suffering that's causing them to act in this way. And this may not be available to you, so tread lightly here, just noticing what's arising. And now letting that go, taking a moment here to ask yourself, how would I like to respond to this investigation, to this anger, to perhaps this understanding? In the light of awareness that this investigation is bringing, is there a path forward for me to channel this feeling into constructive action? And this can be big, it can be small. There is no right or wrong action here. Perhaps it's just educating yourself further on what's lying beneath this anger. Maybe it's having a conversation. Let's take a moment here to set an intention of how we would like to transform this anger into wise action. And I'd like to invite you here to work with this intention for a moment. How would it feel to take action in this way? What arises in the felt experience when you imagine or visualize yourself taking action, bringing this intention to fruition? How does that feel? And what would it be like to fuel that intention with that anger, with that emotion? Like harnessing that energy from the wave that normally would overtake us, how do we skillfully use it to support this intention?
And then as you're ready, beginning to release this reflection, if you had your eyes closed, taking your time to return back to the awareness of light once again. So thank you for going deep there with me. Um, we're going to take some moments to really bring that experience from inside the body and the feelings into a vibration of sound and with an invitation for you to share. And so we'll take, um, let's say, uh, seven or eight minutes and we'll break out into smaller groups. Uh, again, a reminder of respect that we're here to listen and witness. Uh, not to offer advice or try and fix anything that anyone is sharing. Um, please feel free to go as deep or stay, uh, you know, uh, on the surface as much as is feeling good for you right now. Um, but just really using this time to hear the words, hear the vibration, the, uh, bring the felt experience into uh, sound. Uh, and also knowing that this is raw. This might be the first time that, that you've done this. And so if words aren't coming fluidly, that's totally fine. That's part of the practice. So you might need to talk yourself through it or correct yourself as you go. No problem there. So we'll break out into smaller rooms. Just keep an eye on time. I'm going to ask you to manage that on your own. Uh, we'll give you a little heads up right before we come back into the big group. Okay. Take Any, how, how long to make the rooms? Uh, let's do eight, eight minutes. Okay. Uh, before we break out, are there any questions about what we're about to do? Not so much about the practices or your experience, but any questions about uh, just this, this sharing? Okay, great. So um, let's uh, move into that and then we'll see you in eight minutes. So welcome back, everyone. Um, so I figure we take about 10 minutes and just open it up um, for what your experience was like, maybe what was shared in your smaller groups. Um, so again, this is really your time to talk to your experience and, and open to the group. So what did you learn? What was the experience like? Um, what was difficult? Where are questions? Yes, Tom. Here, okay. Okay, I guess I'm unmuted now. I, I felt like that one of the things that I learned was that I'm, you know, there's so much, um, I don't know, sorrow and helplessness and anger and fear that's inside me that I feel like, you know, as I practice meditation and I'm trying to um, see through the kind of stories in my head, the narrative in my head, I was realizing that part of what's attractive about the stories in my head is that I have control, I have power, I can tell people to shut up, I can, you know, and they'll do it, or I can, you know, that there's this way in which I can sort of imagine myself being, occupying a position of, of justice and rightness and, and it being effective. And then, you know, sort of as I'm trying to leave that world and see what's really here, I, I guess I was kind of triggered in this, well, triggered in a good way, or sort of in, in the way that you talked about that you had to open to the idea that the world is not safe, that, um, you know, that, that that's something that's real and true. And, and um, so that just felt very kind of moving and, and softening, I guess I'd say. Mm. Thank you for sharing that, Tom. And I'm curious, were you able to identify a need uh, or understand a need underneath your own anger in that, in that exploration? Um, it wasn't so much, I mean, I think the need is to be effective in the world and to, um, you know, I once heard a story that Mr. Rogers wanted to live in heaven. He didn't want to go to heaven. He wanted to live in heaven. And so he set about the task of making heaven around him. And, and by just 
encountering people and treating them with kindness and respect and that that was enough in a certain way that had to be enough because it was all they could do. So I just sort of felt the, the sort of wish and, and thought about acting in small ways and um, yeah, as being, the, as being all I can do basically, as being the most that I can do and it could be good enough. So it felt, so it's not quite articulated, but it was just that image, I guess. Mm. Thank you. That's really inspiring for me, creating heaven. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Um, so I think for me, something I continue to struggle with when it comes to anger is that it has a very much addictive quality for me. It feels like a dopamine hit. Like mm. it's so hard way, uh, hard to walk away from that feeling. So I think bringing in mindfulness and awareness and space feels almost unpleasant to that degree in comparison to this like righteous anger. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. And same, I'm curious, is there anything underneath that you were able to identify in terms of your needs? Um, for my specific case, yeah, it actually tied into um, childhood issues mm -hmm. that I had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. there's definitely an integration of the personal and also what's happening in society. The highlight reel being that um, I'm being underpaid, and as a woman of color, that was so triggering. And then the frustration, a part of it came from like, why do I have to spend time trying to advocate for myself? You should be taking care of me mm -hmm. um, and I shouldn't have to do this. So it's just mm -hmm. that relationship I have with um, my manager, a lot of it was projection mm -hmm. because the conversation hasn't even happened yet, but I'm already making all these assumptions. Uh, yeah. And that's kind of fueling this emotion of anger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that. I think, you know, we were talking about that database and you know this this might feel uncomfortable for some people to hear but the database that causes us to be triggered when we see social injustice and inequality might be coming from something that has nothing to do with race or social justice so like my need my my the, my anger and sadness around not being in a safe world comes from my own personal database of being a gay man and not feeling safe to express myself with who i am it has nothing to do with race, but it's fueling my response. And so getting in there and understanding it's my own need to be safe that's causing me to be angry when I see others not being treated that way gives me a little bit more insight into where that emotion is coming from. And so, Sandy, I, I think I really appreciate you offering that another example of how something in your database can be fueling that emotion. Thank you. I think we may have time for one more if anyone has anything they'd like to share about their experience or their intention. Um, I'll share. Hi, T. Hi. And everyone. Uh, yes, I was um, sharing with my partner about uh, the recent experiences that I have been noticing within myself and others of uh, being the recipient or others being the recipient of microaggressions uh, that seems to be very, uh, I don't know if it's hyper or I'm just more aware of them uh, in this last few weeks. Uh, specifically a, a, a neighbor of mine whose um, skin color is just a little bit darker than mine and he was doing work in his front yard and sweeping under his truck and two blonde women walked by and said to him uh i guess they're keeping you busy huh that's a good thing and uh, i immediately felt the anger so that's the anger that i work with um, in your process thank mm -hmm. you for that and um 
realizing not only that, but several experiences that I have continuously, even yesterday at the grocery store, I usually don't have whoever is bagging groceries or the person behind the register offering to bag my groceries, even though they were bagged for the person before me who was a white person, um, or they're usually bagged for other white people, or if there's someone helping, even if it's a, a kid, would go to someone else and would leave me and I would bag my own groceries, which is fine. But I started noticing how often that happens uh, with me in particular. And um, so uh, when I go into that, um, that need in, um, yes, I find, a, I find sadness, but I find the need to be uh, visible as equal. And for my neighbor and others who have darker skin uh, to be visible as equal, to be seen as equal. And, um, and also getting into the, the sadness of the, of the conditioning. Um, when I used to live in San Francisco, I had so many instances of uh, cleaning, sweeping the, the sidewalk because people were not cleaning out for their dogs. And having people come and ask me, oh, can you talk to your employer? And I would say, I'm self-employed. What do you mean? I'm like, no, no, I know you work in different places, but really, can you talk to the, uh, to the owner of the house? And I would say, you're talking to her. And the, the, the shock and then adapting to, I would wear nice clothes whenever I would go out and clean the sidewalk so that I would be considered worthy of living there and um so just noticing the when i tapped into the compassion or the needs of the other i just really tap into the sadness of the of the conditioning what is the expectation of who should live in this neighborhood or that neighborhood or get groceries bagged mm. what what should they look like mm. Thank you for sharing that. I, I feel that. And I'm curious if you feel comfortable sharing, was there an intention that came out of that for you? I think it was uh, mostly being able to um, talk more about mm -hmm. microaggressions mm -hmm. and how um, even though sometimes people like these two women with my neighbor may have a, uh, a positive intention to connect in some way mm. that uh, the impact is very different than, than the intention and that we have to be able to speak up about the impact. Mm. Mm. As a recipient, you it's a visceral reaction. It hurts. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you for sharing that. That's powerful. That Powerful intention. Yeah. So as we're coming to an end of our session, I just wanted to take a moment to read this really beautiful poem. Um, and then we'll have a couple of announcements and then we'll um, do our, our closing. Um, so this is a poem from Congressman John Lewis. You are a light. You are the light. Never let anyone, any person or any force dampen, dim or diminish your light. Study the path of others to make your way easier and more abundant. Lean towards the whispers of your own heart, discover the universal truth and follow what it dictates. Release the need to hate, to harbor division and the enticement of revenge. Release all bitterness. Hold only love, only peace in your heart knowing that the battle of good to overcome evil is already won. Choose confrontation wisely, but when it's your time, don't be afraid to stand up, speak up, and speak out against injustice. And if you will follow your truth down the road to peace and the affirmation of love, if you shine like a beacon for all to see, then the poetry of all the great dreamers and philosophers is yours to manifest in a nation 
a world community, and a beloved community that is finally at peace with itself. I got chills just reading that. Um, so uh, we'll just pause for a brief moment here. I know we're almost at time for announcement from the center, and then we'll just close with like a you know one minute dedication. Tig, thank you so much um, for everything this evening. We really um, it was really wonderful. I feel like yeah, I'm not going to say anything as eloquent as what has been said. Um, I'm super moved by your closing with that poem. Um, I know many of us have been really listening to John Lewis a lot these last few weeks, and wow, I just was struck by Alejandro sharing her intention to speak that poem and him saying the same thing. And, and I guess at the root that for me, this kind of work, that's the fruit of it that I hope that when I, when the opportunity comes, because it's one thing to talk in this container and it's another to be out in the world and be able to act skillfully when something happens, whether it causes us anger or sadness or some other emotion. So thank you for helping us work through this too. And thanks to everyone who shared and was vulnerable. Um, I just encourage you to check out next Tuesday and the Tuesday after. We have more wonderful teachers coming in, including Alejandra in a few weeks. So um, thank you. And uh, I, I think Katie just put a link in the chat to our newsletter. So if you're not already on our newsletter, please, um, sign up for that and um, then you'll you'll find out or just check out sfdharmacollective.org. We have a bunch of um, classes every week and more wise action next week. Thank you, Tig. Thank you, Noam. Um, and also just as a reminder, the, um, my portion of the donations that we received tonight are going to the East Bay Arts Alliance. So helping communities of color create um, creative spaces. I'm an artist myself. And so I wanted to find, uh, I work with an organization to help support people of color access those creative spaces. So thank you for those that did donate and um, for all of the work that you've done tonight showing up this is wise action coming here and, ex and exploring and doing the work and it's hard and it's uncomfortable and it's what's needed so thank you so much for that and um, i'd like to say before we close if any of my words or actions mistakes or faults cause harm to any of you i ask forgiveness and any words or actions that cause me harm are forgiven so let's take a moment to uh, just dedicate the energy that we've been cultivating, reflecting on this experience together in this safe container of the Dharma Collective. The exploration of difficult emotions, transforming our anger into wise action, setting intentions of how to move forward and feeling into those. And so dedicating that energy to taking wise action in the world. May we have the eyes that look softly onto a world of suffering with compassion. May we have the ears that listen to the world with love so that may we may respond skillfully. And may we speak the words that are true and just for the benefit of all. May there be peace. Thank you, everyone. I wish you well, and may all of our intentions come to fruition swiftly and with ease. Thank you, Tig. Thank you. Thank you, Tig. Thank you, Have Tig. a good night, everyone.